Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Israel. We have just landed at Ben Gurion International Airport. We've we landed! Well, welcome everybody. Yeah. We've arrived. <laughs> and um, very smooth flight. Very good. Very good. And it's um, quite late. It's quite wet outside. Quite late at night. It's um, five, 5 to 9. Yeah. We've still got a bit of a bus journey up to Jerusalem. About an hour and a half, have we? Less than that. Less than that. Yeah. Less than that. Yeah. An hour or so. Back to Jerusalem. Yeah. An hour or so. It's fabulous. Yeah. yeah. Morning everybody, it's uh, the first morning here and we're in Jerusalem after a very interesting drive that took about three hours last night to uh, get here with lots and lots of traffic jams and mad Israel drivers and people walking down the middle of the motorway. <coughs> we finally made it and it is snowing. Well, there's the hotel, there's probably about four or five inches of snow everywhere. And then these are the main uh, city walls here. Day one drop. We always have adventures, don't we? We've been on the day. That is the key drop, Valley. Okay, we're getting bombarded by the locals here. We're the northerners. Oh, Let's go and fight. This is the spot here where um, Jesus famously had a snowball fight yeah. um, and, and uh, won. <laughs> Get an idea how much it's snowing when you look at Raga's Rally. Yeah. <laughs> this is the Paternoster Church. On the Mount of Olives. On the Mount of Olives. Do you know that? Place? On the Mount of Olives, yeah. Paternoster Church, Mount of Olives. Can you believe the snow? In the snow. Not an olive to be seen. So we're under the church of the Paternoster, and this is the spot where Jesus is said to have ascended from, which is rather strange because it's in a cave, and you think he would have been out in the open when he ascended. So what you've got round here is this is the side of Mount of Olives where Jesus taught us to pray the Lord's Prayer. So you've got the Lord's Prayer. Loads of different languages Many. on these plaques. About 64 Things like a tree. different languages. A couple of cars have crashed outside the church. There's an ambulance here. All the kids are around having snowball fights. So this walk, what's this walk known as, Andy? Do you remember? This is the, well, this is the Palm Sunday route. Palm yeah, Sunday route. As close as they can tell. Yeah. So it would have been the route he took in from because he'd originally come from Bethany in Bethpage or whatever. Yeah. Really got the and then yeah. Down here from Mount Wallace. And they walked down, down here. Down I don't think Jesus had this trouble when he was coming on the cult. No shorts in here today. That's the temple. Temple wall straight ahead. Temple walls. Church. Yeah, they're, they're don't with the rock here, we've got Al-Aqsa Mosque over here. Hello everybody! <laughs> Give us a wave! They would have buried people. they have been in a stone tomb like that. And then the relatives come a year later and put the bones in these boxes to wait for the resurrection. So at the end of Schindler's List, when they would have put the stones on the graves, these are the big graves that, the, that were doing it. Happy cat time. I've got an item in here. In Aramaic, which means stand, be awake, and pray. Because I think it's the place where he felt lonely. 
at the Garden of Gethsemane. This is also the place where he was betrayed by his own disciples. And how easy it would have been for Jesus just to escape. It would have been very, very easy. The place was full of pilgrims. He could have raised even people with the crowd. And do you sense that, that real choice that goes on here in the Garden of Gethsemane? Does he go that way, back into the city, to face a certain death? Or does he go that way, to rescue himself, to avoid death, to avoid the awful thing that's about to happen. And that's that choice, you get that sense here, that choice that Jesus had, that way or that way, that's the choice that he had. So that tree there was planted in 1964 by Pope Paul VI. This tree over here, apparently they've dated the roots from this tree, over 2,800 years old. We will be entering the old city by um, I think called Stephen's Gate and we're going into the Pools of Bethesda um, and uh, we'll think briefly about that story of the healing that took place there. And we will go to a little church called Sedan's Church which is a, I reckon is the most beautiful church in Jerusalem but that's just me. Uh, and then we're going to uh, head off for lunch at a place called the Ecce Homo Convent. And then we're going to have a, a Eucharist just after lunch. You really, do you really think it is the birthplace of the Virgin Mary? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> I think they might have painted a nicer sign if it really was, wouldn't they? <laughs> <laughs> So we're at this um, kind of nunnery type place where you can stop, we've just had some l nice lunch here which has been great and um, we're kind of in the old city area of Jerusalem now so I'm just going to show you some shots um, of the skyline, the views around here. Kids stood on the roofs having a snowball fight. Now kind of in the area underneath that monastery. Put a crown on and all the rest of So these are these marks on the stone from this rush, this Roman dice game. And now we're going up the steps. Where are we going to? The Pool of Bethsaida or something? I'm not sure. One of the famous. I was listening with half an ear. Yeah. One of the famous pools anyway we're on our way to now. This is Jerusalem, all of the Jewish holy days. Inside the city, near the Sheep Gate, is the Pool of Bethesda, with five covered porches. Crowds of sick people, blind, lame or paralysed, lay on the porches. One of the men lying there had been sick for 38 years. When Jesus saw him, he knew he had been ill for a long time, and he asked him, would you like to get well? I can't, sir, the sick man said, for I have no one to put me in the pool where the water bubbles up. Someone else always gets there ahead of me. Jesus told him, stand up, pick up your mat and walk. Instantly, the man was healed. He rolled up his sleeping mat and began walking. But this miracle happened on the Sabbath. So the Jewish leaders objected. They said to the man who was cured, you cannot work on the Sabbath. The law does not allow you to carry that sleeping mat. But he replied, The man who healed me told me, pick up your mat and walk. Who said such a thing as that, they demanded. The man didn't know, for Jesus had disappeared into the crowd. But afterwards, Jesus found him in the temple and told him, Now you are well, so stop sinning, or something even worse may happen to you. Then the man went and told the Jewish leaders that it was Jesus who had healed him. Bethesda means house of flesh flood. Beth, house. It's the flesh flood. It's the house of the flesh flood. Over here used to be two pools. Northern pool, all this area. Southern pool where we have the monastery and the ticket where we cross through to this pool. So upper pool and lower pool, northern pool and southern pool. First pool was paved by King Ahaz, King of Judea. 
mentioned Book of Kings and Book of Isaiah. Southern Pool was paved during the Maccabean period by Simon the High Priest, mentioned Book of the Maccabeans, talking about the High Priest who entered into the temple after he paved the pool of Bethesda, the Southern Pool of Bethesda. So this is uh, St. Anne's Church and uh, built during the uh, time of the Crusades. According to Graham, it's the most uh, beautiful church in Jerusalem. Very simple, simple and unadorned. beginning of the uh, second day here and uh, going down the steps to enter the city through uh, one of the gates into the old city en route to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. It's like houses just built on top of all the shops and everything else. It's obviously just grown and grown as time has gone on and more people have moved in. Good morning. I don't really entirely understand the talk that we just had, but no. it was good. <laughs> Apparently these are the foundations to the narrow gate, complete with electric heater there to keep us warm. Yeah, just authenticity. When Jesus was crucified he would have been taken through the narrow gate through the city walls on his way out to Golgotha. So this would be the route he'd taken. During the Crusader period, to encourage the pilgrims coming from Europe visiting the place, they built the platform that we shall see and they've allowed them to pray at the place of the crucifixion. All right, shall we go please? This is the place where Abraham saw the salvation of God happening before it happened. So it's something quite a special moment to go, and, to go and pray. So you might want to take a few minutes just to, to pause there, as many Christians do day after day here in this place, from all over the world, uh, coming to pray simply at, at the very place where Jesus died. What are your thoughts on going to the location of the cross then, Dave? Um, it's strange, isn't it? Brian mm. had a good observation. Mm. Tell, tell um, what your observation was when you were writing. Mm. struck by the fact that it was a place where it was completely alone and forsaken by everybody. Yeah. And yet now we return to that place. We want to reach out and connect yeah. with that very uh, same place in which he was so much on his own. And yeah. it's now so popular and so full of people. Oh, this, this crack here in the rock beneath it is um, evidence of an earthquake that happened around Jesus' time. This is known as the Rock of Humiliation. Draw markings from the Crusades. centre of the church which historically would be recognised as being the centre of the world. This is 
site of the tomb of Jesus, which has covered over this thing called a cottage, in whatever the, the word is for it. Yeah. It's built by Queen Helena. And inside it, there's a fragment of the stone that's over the grave, apparently, and some sort of part of the slab that's in there. Part of the slab is covered over with marble, so you can't nick the stones. This is the tomb of Apology, Joseph the of, of Jesus Arimathea. And giving his tomb to the Lord. Now, ladies and gentlemen, also it's the tomb of Joseph uh, of Nicodemus. It's so okay, yeah. We've made yeah. it, so uh, we've done the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Yeah. We've um, been to the, the spot, allegedly, where Jesus was crucified. Yeah, and we touched the, uh, touched the rock yeah. on the site of the crucifixion, yeah. which is a moving experience. Yeah. If you cat. Yeah, let's just have a look at the cow there. There it is, the uh, cat of the Holy Sepulchre, Sepulchre. the resurrection cat. So here we are walking through the various markets on the way back from the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Amazing atmosphere actually. Seen anything you fancy here? Um, not really, no. Uh, mm. the, uh, the model baby Jesus is. Yeah, the plastic um, baby Jesus is pretty good. Tempting, on it? Very tempting. I'm waiting for a time when there's going to be a lot of uh, people in the square, maybe down by the Wailing Wall, or something. Yeah. Doing the Wailing Wall. Yeah. Hey, doing, doing the Wailing, wailing Wall. And, you know, with lots of people out in the local area. Yeah. Um, so we can see the real hustle, the bustle yeah. of the local um, atmosphere. So this is uh, David's Tower. I came in last night and had a look at this. Now I'm walking, night right? time walk. <laughs> Jaffa up. Gate, we are. We're Jaffa Gate. These are the beauty, beautiful HTV people. Oh. Okay. <laughs> On the word HCB, they yeah. immediately close. Yeah, yeah, and say that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Yeah. So yeah. good to see you. So good to be here tonight. <laughs> Don't you think it's amazing? Absolutely amazing. I mean, I've had a terrific here. time. Got someone doing a nice sculpture over there. I'm seeing the snow. I think uh, the snowman might be holding a, a sort of a walking stick. Yeah. Maybe that was the, the idea yesterday yeah. to keep them going. So, so far so good. Reflection, so far, so good. Reflections on the pilgrimage. It's going all right. Well, we haven't lost anybody. No? Yeah, of course not. Not too many broken yeah. bones. No, a few minor injuries, but nothing that injuries, but involved hospitalisation. Biggest storm yeah. in the Middle East for 20 yeah. years. Yeah. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. Biggest snowstorm. Well, yeah, biggest storm yeah. generally. Just, wow. Just yeah. So it's just over here. It's been, it's been good. <laughs> and this is just the corner of the citadel, which is um, yeah. originally built by Herod. Mm -hmm. Probably the place where Jesus was tried. Yeah. Um, city walls go on down there towards the south. And over here you have the uh, one of the areas, first areas where Jewish people were bought. Oh yeah. Um, bought, bought lamb, the bought lamb, lit windmill there. Yeah. I think this building over here is the King David Hotel. Which is the one oh, behind, behind the um, thing that was the King David Hotel. Yeah, it was bombed. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah. This is right. So here we are with the uh, a map of the uh, city and we're just focusing in on the giant bird that has arrived and is literally strutting its stuff on top of the houses. Um, so that's the sheep gate. And they're the pools of Bethesda, which were outside the city. It's Herod's temple. The valley leading up towards the temple. The bit of land that David took. This rock here is Golgotha. Those bits, yeah. That sharp bit just sticking up on the top will be where the Church of the Holy Sepulchre has now been built. So there's the dome of the shrine that holds the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls, which is created in the shape of uh, the pots, or the lid of the pot uh, that the Dead Sea Scrolls were contained within. The oldest uh, surviving evidence of a lot of the books of the Old Testament complete there, far, far earlier than anything existed before, so it's confirming the authenticity of a lot of stuff. Yeah. Now this is triple strength. Triple strength Arab coffee, so you're adding like a full teaspoon of sugar. Black so like the night. basically. Cheers. Well. Nice. Saint Martha, Saint Lazarus, and Saint Mary. 
So in the church here, we've got um, these pictures depicting various events at Bethany. There is um, obviously Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. Over here, you've got Jesus being anointed with the um, fantastic perfume Nard. House at Bethany. There's Jesus at the house with Mary and Martha. And then finally, you've got the resurrected Jesus uh, arriving in this area. Sign up there makes it quite clear that Lazarus is a tomb. Is that there? Is up there. Let's go and have a look. Get your um, Lazarus tomb spices and herbs and other spices and herbs. Uh, here we are at Lazarus's tomb and uh, people are going in, going in but no one's come out yet. There's, there's, a, there's a sign. Was that there? Has that always been there, that sign? I don't think it was down there. Not, not, not on the day. Not on the day. It would have been useful though. Came afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. You've risen. You've risen from the dead. <laughs> Lazarus's tomb. <laughs> Which is what the tomb was. Yeah, that would be the theory. Okay. Here's Alan coming out of the tomb. I'm rising from the dead. Here he is, rising from the dead. Alan, come out. Hey, I'm alive. So we're actually in Palestine in this area in Bethany. It's outside of Israel. But it's zone B, which means uh, it's safe to kind of come in this area. So we're at this uh, boarding school for Palestinian children in Bethany and uh, just learning about uh, the work that goes on here, supporting these orphan children. I'm supported by um, McCabe Pilgrimages, the company that's organised the pilgrimage for us. So Charlie, Keir and Alex have decided to take him on in football. Charlie, some fancy footwork there from Charlie. They've lost control. Charlie's on the ball again. Back to Alex. Got it. And uh, Kia's in there. Nice head head to the ground there. It's out of, pushed it out of play. Good defensive uh, tactic there from Kia. Going for goal. Going for goal. Charlie's trying to block there. Quite aggressive tackling taking place. A little throw in. Oh, oh, good. almost there. Good save. Cracking save from the goalkeeper there. Out to Alex. Alex playing across. Kia's running forward, can he pick up the ball and go? Yes, it's there! It's there, a beautiful goal from Kia. And a few more uh, sort of shoots. Finn and Rich have uh, joined the play. Charlie's running back furiously there, trying to cover. Breaking three, and they've scored! What a beautiful goal, great pass. Straight in the back of the net. Ball's played back in. Forward, oh, it's blocked. We really are mounting a strong attack here, pushing everything forward. Charlie's running around like I don't know what here, trying to block that ball. Go, Rich. Oh, just wide of the net there. Rich is picking it up, moving it forward. Oh, it's just getting blocked from all sides here, going back. So get a pass through to Charlie. Charlie. Uh, not not going to happen. Not going to happen, guys. Oh, Charlie just, just got it loose there, but it back out of play. I think that's all the action we're going to see this afternoon, to be honest, because we're going to get back to the coach. So, nice warm handshakes. Well, good morning, viewers. Good morning, campers. Be, yeah, it's great to be here. It's lovely. Yeah, we're out in the uh, Jordanian desert somewhere. Very sunny. Very sunny, lovely. No um, snow. Yeah. Lots of uh, countryside all around, the Jordanian desert, trans, the Jordan mountains or something or other, Trans-Jordanian something comes into it as well. That's right, and if you look yeah. up here, this is the Herodium. This is the Herodium that we're going to explore now. It's the, uh, is it the, the resting place or something like that? The resting place of, of King Herod. King Herod the Great. Yeah. So um, we've all got these cool earpieces in now. With packs. Yeah. Um, not for Radio 1 or we listening like to the football commentary. <laughs> Part of the CIA, mm -hmm. yeah. But we are—we're wired in. We can listen to Father Graham directly. 
Well, something's it, going through now. It, it goes straight into oh. our minds. Yeah, straight into our minds. In the valley somewhere is the aqueduct built by Herod the Great. Water supplies around here is a particular significance to uh, the choice of this location. Apparently, uh, Herod cut off the top of this mountain. So you can see the Dead Sea there in the distance. These mountains over here are likely to have been the area where Moses looked across at the Promised Land from, across the Jordan Valley. Herod was uh, an interesting character, incredibly wealthy. Really was kind of hand in glove with the uh, Romans. Modelled a lot of the, his buildings on um, Roman designs. Responsible for a lot of the buildings in Jerusalem. He had a number of palaces around the whole region. And this potentially could have been the location that the Magi or the wise men came to. So basically, you've got the Jordan Valley goes from this bit all the way through the Dead Sea, Jordan River up to the top there. That is that's the Great Rift Valley that goes all the way down to the to the Red Sea and all the way down mm. through Africa. But this is the uh, the first dome ever made in the world. Going down into the tunnels under the Herodium. Big water system. Herod uh, the Great was certainly a great architect. And then down the bottom of the hill in the valley is Herod's swimming pool, which apparently he used to murder anybody he didn't like the look of. So we're here uh, in the fields where the shepherds would have heard from the angels. And um, we're looking across to Bethlehem over there. All right, Brian. So this was the spot where the angels came, a bit of heaven broke through to earth. It's cold enough to be Christmas today. It's cold to enough, Christmas. yeah, it is a bit chilly. It's, uh, it's good to understand that mm. God takes the insignificant. And That's right. There's something wonderful with it. You can use us whatever we like. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, I'm really encouraged by that. Yeah. So we're just walking up to uh, Manger Square in um, Bethlehem where you'll find the Church of the Nativity. It contains a cave which is the uh, site of the birthplace of uh, Jesus. See the gate here to the church has been reduced in size over the years, smaller and smaller till now. It's just this little low door. Okay, we're inside the uh, Church of the Nativity now. It's an ancient Byzantine church. You can see there's a number of uh, incense lamps and burners just suspended from the ceiling all over the, uh, the area of the church. There's evidence of uh, crosses probably from the Crusades. It's the Council of Constantinople with the fathers of Constantinople underneath. This is the oldest continuously used church in the world. Since 335 till today. Wow. 335 till this moment. Continuously. It's just queuing to go down into the, uh, the cave where Jesus was born now. The Lord place of birth three steps below the manger. down to see the manger. In, in a way, it's, it's really kind of difficult to kind of sort of reconcile the difference between, um, you know, the, the sort of falling out, the bickering. You know, people even fighting over the mops over which bit of the floor they're allowed to clean. Mm. And yet Jesus coming as the Prince of Peace, you mm. know, to, to unite us all as one people. Mm. 
it's funny about it, in each place we've been, the significance of the place and what's been going on around it, what's been built on top of it, what arguments are uh, in place, and who owns what, um, that contrast between the significance of the place and quite what's going on now. Yeah. Don't know what else to say really, it's just boring inspiring. Meanwhile, the guy is struggling to get the uh, patio heaters lit over there. Mm. Well, we've all, we've all been there. Yeah. <laughs> so now we're going to uh, St. Jerome's Caves. Uh, but Jerome was a very difficult man. He fell out of everybody in the So this is where Jerome would have written the, or rather translated the uh, Bible into Latin. Latin Vulgate version of the Bible. It's a cave where it all took place. Right. And they worship in Arabic. Wow. You want to hear the Lord's Prayer the way that Jesus would have said it? Yes, sir. Would you like to hear? Yes. Yeah. Lord's Prayer in Arabic. Worship Abu Wabro Rohu Kadisho Hadalo Shariro Amir. so our church over there, you see? That church over there. This is the Arabic language who speaks his father. The Arabic language and the Hebrew language it is taken from the Aramaic language. So, so Syrian church you who uh, worship in Aramaic. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus is language. Five minutes the bus will be here. Let's go to the... He's Coptic. Place. Yeah? Yes. He's Coptic. And, and Syrian. 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 We are Coptic close and Syrian. Syrian. We are one church. Yes, one church. One church. Very good. Yeah. 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 We are Mia Fuzi. We are Mia Fuzi. Very good. Just approaching the uh, checkpoint between uh, Palestine and Israel. Just see the wall there. Eight metre high wall all around Israel. Just on the way up to the uh, Temple Mount, obviously, what the Muslims regard on their most sacred sites. So we're on this uh, like a wooden uh, bridge which climbs up to the Temple Mount. And actually, on the left is the Wailing Wall, the Western Wall. There it is, the famous uh, dome on the rock. Al-Aqsa Mosque. <laughs> Some crazy people around here. There's a lot of crowns, the crowns which lead around um, the dome, mm -hmm. quite extensive. Yeah. Um, lots of squares which are used for the purification um, area down there. Um, just lots of, lots of space around it. Mm. Some rabbis believe that the Ark of the Covenant is buried down under there and they won't step on that area. Well, they won't come up here anyway, obviously, but, but when they did come up here, wherever that was, they wouldn't go on that area. Well, here I am, sat on the temple steps, actual place where Jesus would have walked. One of the few places in uh, the world, in Jerusalem, where we can be sure Jesus actually walked up these steps. It's an amazing feeling to get that connection with the human uh, God. Imagine Jesus coming down from the Mount of Olives and walking along, coming up the uh, temple steps here. Okay, so we're just um, at the uh, City of David ruins and just looking across from the back of it to the Mount of Olives, you can see there. And this is the Kidron Valley, which is just outside the city walls. Lots of Bible references to the Kidron Valley, so it's great to get that into perspective and location in relation to everything else. There isn't any archaeological evidence that David and Solomon was existed. Both of them, they were existed. Mm. None. Mm -hmm. But we are Whether this was David's mm -hmm. palace or not, we're not sure. So these are the only parts of uh, Nehemiah's walls that are left. David is dying, still a city up above, and there's a question of who is going to be king after David, and um, succession <coughs> after 
in major kings like David is a big, big issue. And of course, Adonijah is uh, one of the people who wants to be king. And the story goes, King David answered, Summon Bathsheba to me. And she came into the king's presence and stood before the king. The king swore, saying, As the Lord lives, who has saved my life from every adversity, as I swore to you by the Lord, the God of Israel, your son Solomon shall succeed me as king, and he shall sit on my throne in my place. So will I do to this day. So will I do this day. Then Bathsheba bowed to him with her face to the ground, and did obeisance to the king, and said, May my lord, King David, live forever. King David said, Summon to me the priest Zadok, the prophet Nathan, Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada. When they came before the king, the king said to them, Take with you the servants of your lord, and have my son Solomon ride on my own mule. Take him down to Gihon. There let the priest Zadok and the prophet Nathan anoint him king over Israel. Then blow the trumpet and say, Long live King Solomon. You shall go up following him. Then mentor and sit on my throne, and he shall be king in my place. For I have appointed him to be ruler over Israel and over Judah. So the priest Zadok, the prophet Nathan, Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, the Cherethites and the Pelethites went down and had Solomon ride on King, King David's mule and led him to Gihon, here. Then the priest Zadok took the horn of oil from the tent and anointed Solomon. And they blew the trumpet and all the people said, Long live King Solomon. And all the people went up following him, playing on pipes and rejoicing with great joy, so that the earth quaked at their noise. Adonijah was having a dinner up in the, in, the, in, the, in the city, thinking that everything's going fine, and he's about to be, a, be, be anointed king. Adonijah and all the guests who were with him heard it as they finished feasting. When Joab heard the sound of the trumpet, he said, Why is this been an uproar? While he was still speaking, Jonathan, son of the priest Abiathar, arrived. Adonijah said, Come in, for you are a worthy man, and surely you bring good news. And Jonathan answered Adonijah, no, for our Lord King David has made Solomon king. Solomon now sits on the royal throne. Moreover, the king's servants came to congratulate our Lord King David, saying, May God make the name of Solomon more famous than yours and make his throne greater than your throne. The king bowed in worship on his bed and went on to pray thus, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who today has granted one of my offspring to sit on my throne and permitted me to witness it. So there is a story of the accession of Solomon. Um, and this idea of you know, they're coming down to Gihon and back up to the city, you can imagine that here. Now, as we go down to the, the uh, Gihon Spring, it's a very special place because actually when you think everything that we've heard over the last few days, everything about Jerusalem, why are we here? In one sense, you can say the reason we're here is because of this bit of water. This spring comes up. Without this bit of water, there would not have been a fortress here. The Jebusites would not have built their city. The Jebusites had not built their city. David would not have taken it. If David hadn't taken it, there wouldn't have been a temple up on the top of the hill with Solomon. If Solomon hadn't built his temple there, um, there wouldn't have been a second temple. It wouldn't have been the place that Jesus came to. It wouldn't have been the center of it, of anything. This would have been a, probably a barren bit of land, just like any other little bit of hill around here. The reason the whole world comes here to Jerusalem, in one sense, <coughs> is because of this spring. We're going down to the Dead Sea, and as you probably know, the Dead Sea is the lowest place on the surface of the Earth. So. Uh, we go down here you've probably never been as low as this in your life but i hope that's physical rather than <laughs> spiritual or psychological so in this cave number four there was the uh, book of isaiah was found and, uh, and various other old testament books in jars hidden by the Essenes. Just looking around from the other side from where the caves are is the Dead Sea. The only way the uh, water escapes is by evaporation. We yet found evidence of um, the walls of Jericho or, or um, evidence that uh, it was occupied in that that time. It doesn't say it didn't wasn't occupied in that time, it's just that evidence hadn't been found of it. But that is the site of Old Testament Jericho. A little bit further away from New Testament Jericho, where the sycamore tree was, that was uh, the village, the town of Jericho at the time of Jesus. But uh, that little mound back there is the tell of Jericho in Old Testament times. Jericho is probably the oldest city in the world, in history going back 10,000 years. So the kind of first city ever in existence, urban life, you could say started in Jericho. Good morning, we've uh, arrived in uh, Siberia. It's a beautiful morning, the sun is shining. You can see the background there, 
Sea of Galilee. We're in Cana. Cana in Galilee. In Galilee. And I think we're, I think we're going to now see the first of the two signs in John's Gospel. Um, which are? Which are turning water into wine, the first one. Mm -hmm. and the second one, Alan? And the second one... Who's <laughs> 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 Amy Vickers? And we don't know what the other miracle at Cana was. Oh, there's the first miracle over there. Yeah. It's a souvenir and coffee shop. Yeah, that's a... <laughs> Who would have thought it? There we are. Another vigorous commentary yeah. from us. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you truly are enlightened by the depth of our insight and knowledge yeah. of these places. It really is an education. But hey, it's a journey, isn't it? All along the journey. So we've found somebody with a bit more uh, <laughs> knowledge of these kind of things. Well, it's none other than the Reverend Andy Emerson. Andy, so... Reverend Hello, Doctor. guys. Welcome. Yeah, yeah. yeah, let's get this right. So, we titles. This it's all the, about titles. That's right. <laughs> So, the second miracle in Cana, yeah. just, just enlighten second us. second miracle in yeah. Cana, some Roman official's son, who uh, was dying, and um, he came to Jesus in Cana, and Jesus uh, said, don't worry, basically your son is healed. He starts walking home, meets his officials coming the other way, and uh, works out it was exactly the time he met Jesus, and his son started getting better. Right, so, so, technically, so technically... Did the, did the miracle yeah. happen in Cana? No. Yeah. Definitely, no. technically, it didn't. No. The, the miracle wasn't actually in Cana. No, which just probably associated accounts, with Cana. Which probably accounts for why uh, you Kier, no Kier, about Kier, the Kier and I miracle. couldn't really think of it yeah. else, because yeah. yeah. we would yeah. never have thought of that one. Yeah. We think too technically, Alan. Yeah. Yeah. That's our problem. This is a fourth century exactly. mosaic exactly. Yep. That, me that mentions that this is the site of the church exactly. of Joseph the by of no, this Joseph of Cana. So, so this, I believe, um, was the area that isn't mentioned directly in the Bible, but is probably the area where Jesus worked and the likelihood is that they were working with kind of stone rather than um, than wood which unfortunately ruins the joke you know carpenter from Nazareth seeks joiners so this is the uh, location of the city of Sepphoris mosaic here is known as the Mona Lisa of Galilee and the mosaic dates from about 130 AD Yep. In the reign of Hadrian. Hadrian. And you have Heracles and Dionysius in the middle having a drinking competition. Mm. So he can remain sober longest. <laughs> There's the main kind of road down the middle. You can see the, the tracks gouged out of the stone from the wagons that have rolled through here. And who knows, you know, we may be walking on a street that Jesus walked on and he was going about his trade with his dad Joseph. And when Jesus preached about uh, a city on a hill cannot be hidden, this would be the kind of view that he would have seen. So here we are for lunch at the Nazareth YMCA. Now, when I talk about the name Nazareth and where it came from, well, you know, there's a prophecy mentioned in the book of Isaiah that, that talks about this new sprout. The new shoot is supposed to grow out of the root of Jesse. It's a prophecy also about the Messiah. Now, the word shoot in uh, Hebrew is netzel. And the word Nazareth is natzeret. So it's the same root word. And Jesus, he was a Nazarene, natzelati. So again, it's the same root word. And we also know that the, you know, the Messiah was supposed to come from the household of David. And you know, Jesus, he came from the household of David. So that was that prophecy came to pass. And Christianity is natzrut. And so again, it's the same root word, it's that new sprout. First century olive press. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me and He's anointed me to give sight to the blind, heal the broken, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And we know that after having read that, He sat down, closed the scroll, and all the people were just looking at Him, waiting for what He's about to say. We are now close to the place 
But the angel Gabriel appeared to Mary, I think. Yeah, and, and where, where actually are we? <laughs> oh, is it Nazareth? We still? are in Nazareth still. We're yeah, still in Nazareth. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, this well is likely to have been the place when Jesus came for water. Perhaps played around here as a child. This would be the Byzantine church that's been built on it. This is supposed to be the place of the Annunciation where the angel Gabriel came to Mary. Absolutely beautiful uh, Greek Orthodox church. As they go, covered in paintings. We're at the convent of the Sisters of Nazareth. <coughs> We're going with the sister down into the basement to see some of the original Nazareth archaeological uh, remains. This may well have been the house of Joseph. Um, but even if it wasn't, and if this still is the first century of the house, uh, Nazareth was not a big place. Um, Jesus, growing up as a child, would have known this house. He'd have gone past that door, probably gone in. Maybe it was the house of his friends or his house of his neighbours or whatever. So we're, we're actually pretty close here to the place where Jesus was. I first came here about 20 years ago when I first came to Nazareth and um, uh, was taken down here and actually found it very, very special. Not that many groups actually come to this site. And uh, I always thought when I come to Nazareth, I want to come here because it's a, it's a place where you get feel you really are quite close to the to, to Jesus, or at least the, the Jesus of history, as he um, as he grew up. And the other, the other reason is that down down below, as you'll see in a moment, is uh, what I think is one of the best examples of a first century Cochin tomb, um, that make give you a much better idea of what the tomb of Jesus might have looked like. The, the Holy Sepulchre originally would have been something like this, on a sort of rock face. Um, you can imagine the rock face like that. But the other thing is this then, this thing here, the Rolling Stone, and which has a niche in the back. And uh, it's sort of heavy enough so that, uh, you know, two or three hefty men could probably roll it across. They actually do roll this across every now and again. Um, and, uh, but so heavy that a couple of women coming down on the day might well say, ah, no, blimey, who's going to roll that stone away for us? Um, so, you know, when the bodies are in there, they roll the stone across. When someone else dies, they roll it back again, put the body in. Or when they go, they go, they go to get the, um, the bones for the ossuaries, they can, they can move it. But over here are some of the sites we'll be seeing this afternoon. Capernaum, the uh, place where Jesus had his main base, is over here. Over the other side here, this is um, the region on the east side of the lake, where we uh, remember the stories of the gathering swine coming down those slopes into the lake. So here we are at the River Jordan. It looks as though there's a decent amount of water in it as well at the moment. Just thinking Jordan, obviously where John the Baptist baptised Jesus. And also the crossing of the Jordan into the Promised Land. So we're going to explore the town of Capernaum and uh, town. <laughs> what? Is it a town? <laughs> Do we know anything? <laughs> Do we know anything at all? It could be a village. It could yeah. be a hamlet. It could, it could be. be. It's definitely not a city. It is a town. Yeah, there is evidence, if we need it, that it is Capernaum, the town of Jesus. All kinds of uh, events happen in this place. Um, as you can look out over these uh, ruins here, these are ruins of first century Capernaum. And um, I often like to look at these ruins and think, um, I wonder which one was the house mm -hmm. where the guy was let through the roof. Mm -hmm. We've heard that story so many times and it happened here. Um, the story of Jairus' daughter probably happened here. The healing of, uh, uh, of Mary's, of, of, of Peter, Simon Peter's mother-in-law happened here. Uh, we'll go down there in a moment and uh, see uh, the house that in all likelihood is uh, Simon Peter's house, the house in which Jesus faced himself. Jesus choosing Capernaum is significant because it's as if he, he looks around and he says, where, where am I going to locate my ministry from? So he locates his ministry right in the very heart of real activity, real business. 
And if you want to launch a new message about the kingdom of God, uh, a new interpretation of the law, a new vision of what God is about to do in his land and in his people on his earth, where better to do it than in a place where the whole world travels through? So Capernaum in the first century had a really international feel to it. This is not just Galilee of the Gentiles, but this was the place through which the world came, from up north, Syria, Mesopotamia, down to Egypt, Africa. People traveling through all the time. So anyone who caught Jesus' message here would travel up down that way, or they'd travel back up this way. It's an ideal place in which to locate a ministry where you're about to preach a new message of the kingdom of God. church on the site of the multiplication, feeding the 5,000. It's actually modelled in the style of a Byzantine church. So we're by the sea and we're going to have a communion service here which should be quite an experience right by the water. We're now on our way to uh, the Sea of Galilee um, to see the uh, actual place where Jesus appeared in his resurrection body uh, to the disciples and ate breakfast with them. What did he eat, Alan? They ate broiled fish. Broiled, yeah, broiled, broiled fish. fish. Sounds delicious. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again Jesus said, Simon of John, do you truly love me? He answered, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, Take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus had asked him the third time, Do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, Feed my sheep. The key of a good guy is to always stay one step He's ahead always, uh, of the rest of the party. Reading yeah. up ahead. That's right. So he knows what to tell us. Yeah. About. So the, the location is called the Mount of the Beatitudes. And uh, because there's no evidence, no proof where the uh, Sermon on the Mount actually took place. Uh, in Matthew it was on a mount, in, in Luke it was on a plain. Um, well, this is a mound, it's not far from Capernaum, it's uh, on the banks of Lake Galilee, and uh, it's as good a place as any, I suppose, or something like that. So uh, that's where this church has been built. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for, for theirs, theirs is, is the, the kingdom, kingdom of heaven. Well, it's the last morning. Up early, packed up, ready to go. Sadly, leaving the uh, beautiful uh, yeah. Lake of Sea of Galilee, Lake of Galilee, whatever it is. Yeah. We were woken up by the Koreans this morning. Some yeah. Mad Muppets downstairs. Yeah. <laughs> were they praising the Lord? Yeah. Too excited, basically. Yeah. Fabulous. So goodbye to the Ron Beach. Yeah, good hotel. Yeah, very, very good, good hotel. hotel. Very impressive. I, I come back. Uh, yeah. yeah. Come back to the Ron Beach. Built by um, Herod the Great, seaport, Paul left on a lot of his journeys. This is Philip from here, place of Christian martyrdom. Um, Eusebius, uh, I think was based here for a while. Absolutely rubbish place to build, a seaport apparently, but Herod still went ahead and built it, largely because he wanted to show the Romans that he was capable of doing that. And as we know from other sites we've visited, He's not one to shy away from an architectural challenge, is he? That's how it would have looked in Herod's day. First century. Brand spanking new. Exactly. 
Yeah. Yes. We're over here at the um, theatre. Yeah. Theatre. Okay. Yep. I couldn't remember for sure without. I've guided some of them. It's Herod's. They came with the Herod's home, if there is one. Mm. It's where he um, at his base. He'd go up to Jerusalem for the festivals. Mm -hmm. He would uh, want to be buried in Herodium. He'd go to to uh, Jericho in the summer when it got too hot. Yeah. Elsewhere, there are springs down there, which means he could have water. Uh -huh. Um, yeah, the old in the really He had yeah, the old. If he was a bit nervous about his enemies, uh, yeah, he was, yeah, uh, paranoid. Yeah. So you build lots of things to make sure you got different yeah. places to go to. Yeah. Here we are, at Caesarea Maritima, Caesarea Maritima, the famous Roman aqueduct. He used to carry the water from the Caramel Mountains to Caesarea. So we just had a uh, lovely meal in this restaurant here, this our restaurant, um, final kind of lunch meal in uh, Israel. The place we're in is modern day Jaffa, which would have been known as Joppa. So uh, last location, uh, next stop, um, the airport. We've had a wonderful time. Yeah. Oh, we're on the steps, we're on the steps, don't we? Um, Okay, so um, five to two. Alright. So here we go. Just another 45 minutes and we'll be landing at Heathrow. Minus one is the temperature there at the moment. After 18 degrees in uh, Israel, it's going to be a bit of a shock to the system. We hope you've liked enjoyed watching the film and you've felt a sense of what it's like to visit the Holy Land as a pilgrim for a week. God bless and thank you.